Hi everyone, let's begin multiple regression. I had already explained to you in my previous video what is a standardized coefficient and unstandardized coefficients. But in this video, we will learn how multiple regression we can run using Excel. So first of all, we will understand what do you mean by multiple regression. I had uh, explained you when there is dependent variable is one and several independent variables. Here is we are calling it multiple regression. And uh, in this multiple regression already differences already explained you R what is R represents the correlation between the observed value and the predicted values of the DV. Here is you can find it out multiple R here is the r square so that means r means what r means it is explaining the correlation between the observed value and the predicted value of the dependent variable next is r square r square you can see here in this uh, value this is the r square that we will receive after running this multiple regression and what do you mean by this r square is the square of r that gives the proportion of variance in the dependent variable accounted for by the set of IVs taken for the model. Let's say we have taken three independent variables. So that means total is 17% dependent variable is explained by these three variables or two variables, whatever is the number of the variable. Let's say here is the two variables. So this 17% um, is explained by these two dependent independent variables next we come to the this r square is used to find out how well the independent variables are able to predict the dependent variable r square value tend to be a bit inflated when the number of ivs independent variables is more or the number of cases is large but when we talk about adjusted R square, adjusted you can see, adjusted R square is only 13%. You can see this R square is 17%, but adjusted R square is lesser than R square. Adjusted R square is lesser than R square. So adjusted R square takes into account these things and gives more accurate information about the fitness of the model. Here is the one example, an adjusted R square value of 0 0.70 would mean that independent variables in the model and predict 70% of the variance in the dependent variable. And when we talk about the multicollinearity refers to a situation when two or more independent variables are highly correlated with each other. When suppose we have taken four independent variables and there is the uh, we can say so two or more independent variables, they are highly correlated with each other. That is why multicollinearity issue is there. So at that time before, after running this, we must uh, resolve this issue of multicollinearity. Multicollinearity causes an inflation in the standard error of regression coefficients resulting in a reduction of their significance. So now we will run first multiple regression using Excel. Types of multiple regression I had already explained hierarchical standard and step by step. And we will we will work on later on. So there is this is the one example. A student want to test a hypothesis regarding the relationship between size and age of a firm and its performance in a particular industry. Size was measured by the number of employees working in the firm age in terms of number of years it is operating and performance was measured by return on equity. So 50 firms we have selected randomly. You can see here these are the total number of the 50 firms. This is the performance. Performance as mentioned performance uh, was measured by return on equity. And this is the and size and age already explained. Size was measured by the number of employees working in the firm and age in terms of the number of years, how old this firm is operating. So that is age. So after that, we just want to know what is the, what which particular variable is giving how much impact on the performance. So this is my data. 
and now what we have to do simply i will go there data data analysis data analysis tool pack i had already explained you how you have to uh, add in this data analysis tool pack and uh, now we will go to regression and then i am going to press okay now you can see input y range input y range means what is your dependent variable in my case this performance is my dependent variable and uh, i will take only till here right this is these are my 50 cases yellow one i will explain you why i had written this after that i am going to take input x range x range means those are your dependent independent variable so this is my x range these are my two independent variables i am going to click here levels because i had already taken into consideration when i had selected this data these levels and confidence in this one is the confidence level here is i am going to take 95 percent only so that is why i will not check this otherwise if you are going to change confidence level let's say some other uh, some other percentage you are considering so then you have to check it output range where i would like to get output so simply what i will do here is where i want to get output suppose i click i will click here and simply i will press okay what happened regression output range will be okay okay okay, okay. this is the output now you can see this is the output let me little bit bigger this size because i had already run this before this so we will just cross check i am just increasing this size 28 right so now you can see the same results multiple r that i had run earlier r square 0.172 adjusted r square you can see here 0.13 adjusted r square standard error and total number of observations are 50 and this is our ANOVA table ANOVA table you can see what is our f significance of f that is 0.011 so that means it is below 0 0.05 so that means we can say that is significance model, significant model, right? And after that, this is our intercept and this is the beta value of size. This is the beta value of H. And after that P value, you can see here P value 0 0.9, 0 0.003 and 0 0.08. Now, what we have to do, we will just manually, we just want to calculate all these values right this is my equation you can see here this is my equation y equal to a plus bx1 i think that would be bx plus sign yeah plus bx2 plus and so on and number of variables that we can add on now what we have to do how we have to use these values simply what i will do here is equal sign what is my a value a is my intercept so should i take it yes this is my intercept this is my intercept i had taken after that what i will do i will just press plus sign and uh, and uh, after this i am going to use this beta value size then i'm just multiplying this x1 what is my x1 let's say i have taken into consideration this is my x right 45 i have taken this the x for this new value again i have to press plus sign then again i will take beta value of h then again i will just bigger this size okay then after that, I'm just multiplying this with the age. Age is 47. And simply I would press enter. So now you can see I'm just bigger this size, how I have calculated. You can see here. 17.96. And this is the same point I had written, 17.96. So that means if we know in the similar equation how this equation will work, these, this is our intercept. 
this is our beta value of psi. This is our beta value of h. I mean, these are my two independent variables. This is intercept value of a. So, any dependent value, dependent variable, any value we can get it for these independent variables. Right? So, this is all about your, this multiple regression and uh, interpretation also. We will run how we have to interpret this result. I have, uh, this one is my hypothesis. Form's performance is not positively related to its size and age. So, one alternate hybrid, form's performance is positively related to its size and H2E means form's performance positively related to its age. So, how we are going to, this one is my um, SPSS result through enter method. I will, I, that video is already uploaded in my SPSS playlist. And uh, you can see here the same values we have received here. So, that means there is no difference when we are going to calculate through SPSS or we are going to calculate through Excel. Same values we have re received here. So, that means this tells us that the two independent variables in our model accounted for 13.8% variance at the D. Because adjusted R square is this. And after that, all those things, this one is the unstandardized coefficient, right? And these are the standardized coefficients, right? And uh, this is the basically, rather than I would say, that one is the slope size and age right this is our slope then after this how we are going to write regression coefficients can be used to construct an ordinary least square equation and also we test the hypothesis on each of the ivs performance i had already calculated in the same manner right i have already shown you and in that way, hypothesis testing, there is the null hypothesis that there is no relationship that is beta coefficient is not different from zero. In that way, we have to write all these interpretation. So I hope this video would be useful to you. Thank you. Keep watching. Stay tuned.